I'd never been fond of anyone at my local school. They were all a little too rude and boring for me. You see, I grew up in a small area with not many people interested in art like I am. So I had to venture off from home and found myself attending a pretty rural art college. It's sort of like a normal university, except it's full of big-headed people. Now the only reason why I'm here is because I've always wanted to be an illustrator. A children's book designer of sorts. I'd always taken a keen interest in children's media and classic books, such as the Arthur series. So when I was sent to live at this college, I was taken back when I realized a lot of the other students here were not all fine artists. You know the kind. The ones who splatter paint on a canvas and claim it's art. I'm not really big on that sort of thing, but I didn't question it. I settled into the new place pretty quickly. I was sharing a dorm with a few other students. There was myself, a graphics designer named Josh, a film slash animator called Lily, and there was one more guy named Daniel. Daniel was one of those fine artists I just described to you. His room was decorated with photographs of distorted women, and he always had weird music playing too. It's like sort of trippy, happy 60s music. He also liked to smoke, so his room always smelt like an old ashtray. It was pretty gross, but he was a nice enough guy and we all got along well enough. We soon became a tightly packed group of friends. It was the start of a new term for us all, and we'd come back from home after spending the summer there. We unpacked all of our things and started talking about what we'd done over the summer. I went hiking with my stepdad. We went on one of those summer camps, replied Josh. I spent most of the time with my girlfriend. We watched films and went to watch some plays too, Lily said. She spent a lot of time whining about missing her sporty girlfriend. But we were glad they got some time together. I hadn't really done much worth mentioning. I did the usual stuff. I went out to parties, went on trips with my family. Nothing really special. I was just about to pipe up and speak when I got interrupted. I spent my time at the dentist, we heard Daniel say. My father is a doctor of sorts, so he let me come with him to explore the hospital. My favorite place to visit was the dentistry. I got to touch and feel real teeth. It was cool. We all stared at him a bit confused. Were you even allowed to have random strangers go in the hospital rooms, let alone play with the equipment? We really didn't care. We knew Daniel was that sort of guy anyway. He was known for getting into trouble for the sake of art. That was always his excuse. We spent our first couple of days getting to grips with our assignments. We found all that we had to do. Naturally, I had to study some illustrators and mimic their styles. Josh spent some money on a new Mac to do some more design tests, and Lily had started playing about with claymation. It was a pretty nice vibe, when we'd be all in our dorms, talking and giving ideas. Well, at least it was until Daniel would start insulting us. He had never been the same since he came back from that summer break. He seemed more cold and distant. We assumed something must have happened to him over break, so we decided to not press him on it. He never told us anything about his projects. In fact, he never even told us what the subject was. It was pretty normal for Daniel to be reserved, but never this much. At nights, he'd just make himself some dinner and shut himself in his room, crank up the music, and not be seen until next morning. The rest of us would just go out places, like bowling or going to a local gig. Daniel used to happily tag along, but not anymore. One night, Josh and I had gone out for a long time. Well, Lily didn't come with us. She said she wanted to see if Daniel was okay, and since he hadn't been talking to us for a few days now, it seemed legitimate. We could see her point, and we complied. She had spent the evening knocking on his door trying to get him to speak with her. Just before we left, we saw his door open and Lily step inside before it was locked again. Brushing it off, we head out. We'd gone to see a movie, and then we went to go get some innocent drinks. It was fun, but we didn't get home till around 2am. When we got back, Josh said goodnight and went straight to bed. I hadn't gone to bed yet. I was pretty damn hungry. Drinking always made me so hungry. So I raided our fridge and found some cold pizza from the night before. I was going back into my room when I realized something. Something I didn't notice before. Daniel wasn't in his room. And Lily wasn't in hers. Due to Daniel's strange new behavior of locking himself in his room until early hours, and Lily never went anywhere without texting us, this was pretty weird. I went over to the door and gave it a knock, 
and sure enough, the door just opened right up. It wasn't locked or anything. I just assumed he and her had gone out with some of his Ponzi art friends. But it wasn't like Daniel to leave the door open like this. I've always been a nosy son of a bitch, so I stepped inside to see if there was any signs he had gone somewhere. His keys were gone, his jacket was gone, but he'd left his wallet on his desk. The other thing that was odd was that he'd left his laptop on his bed and it was still on. The screen was still lit up. Curiosity got the best of me. Perhaps this could be my chance to find out what art project he'd been hiding. I mean, Daniel was a fine artist, so it could have been anything. I noticed that he had a USB plugged in, and had two files on the screen. One was called Dentist Photos, and the other file was a singular image named Teeth.jpg. I clicked on the Dentist Photos file, and there was just pictures of people's teeth and plastic models of teeth. It was nothing interesting. I clicked back off and decided to click on Teeth.jpg. The image would be forever burned into my brain. It startled me so bad that I slammed the laptop shut, shaking, as I sat back. I wasn't sure if I wanted to lift the screen again, but I knew I had to, or Daniel would know someone touched his laptop. I lifted the screen again, staring at the image for a brief moment before clicking away from it nervously. I then made a decision. I needed to show this to Josh and Lily in the morning. This was seriously messed up. I mean, I know that Daniel's an artistic kind of guy, but that was just insane. I quickly bolted back to my own room and scoured for my USB drive. I eventually found it and darted back to Daniel's laptop, where I copied the image onto my USB. I stared at the image for a little while longer. I was trying to dismiss the image as a mere photo manipulation, but there was something wrong about it. Perhaps it was the black soulless eyes, or the fact that whoever or whatever the creature was, was pulling its mouth in such a weird, disturbing way. It almost looked forced, like whoever this creature was, was forced to pose this way. I shook it off as a mere thought, and fixed up the laptop so it didn't look tampered with before I went back to my own room. Soon enough I heard the front door open, then the sound of footsteps then Daniel's door locking. Daniel was back home. But there was no signs of Lily. The next morning, I had waited until Daniel got off to one of his lectures, and since it was Friday, Josh and I had the morning off. I decided now would be a good time to show Josh the image. I asked him if he wanted to see what Daniel had been hiding from us, and he confusedly but eagerly said yes. I brought my laptop into the living room and loaded up my USB. I opened the image for both of us to see. Josh's expression fell to shock before he sputtered. Oh, what is that thing? I could just tell by his reaction that we both were thinking the same thing. This couldn't have been the art project image. There's no way this would pass for a fine art piece. Would it? I mean, sure, art can be creepy at times, but I can't imagine his teachers would appreciate such a creepy and disgusting image. I know that Daniel can be a creepy son of a bitch, but that isn't right. We've got to show Lily that we both cut off one another. We paused briefly before looking at one another with confusion. Where was Lily? I realized that she hadn't come back with Daniel last night, and neither of us had seen her this morning. When I explained to Josh what I did last night, he began to worry. Malik was never the kind to just sneak off and not tell anyone. I picked up my phone and began to ring her mobile, but for a while there was silence. Then, just from Lily's room, we heard a faint buzzing sound. Josh got up and walked into Lily's room rather quickly. He'd never been one to go into girls' rooms, and came back holding Lily's phone in his hand with a worried look on his face. Lily was gone. We had to find a way to get a hold of her. Maybe she just gone to a lecture and forgot her phone, I shuddered. Josh shook his head, chewing his lip out of nerves. N no, that's not right. Lily doesn't have lectures on Friday, remember? She normally at least say hello and take her phone. We know she lives on that thing. She never stops texting her girlfriend. He was right. Lily's life revolved around her phone so we knew there would be no way she'd leave it. 
Suddenly, her phone lit up. Someone was calling her. We both looked at the phone, then back at one another, before Josh passed the phone to me. I brought it up to my ear before speaking. Hello? On the other end of the line, it was her girlfriend calling. I recognized her husky voice. Ah, Louie! You're there! Thank God you're okay. You didn't text me at all last night or this morning. I thought something was wrong. I cringed a little bit, realizing I had to break it to her that I wasn't Lily. As I spoke, I heard her girlfriend begin to get upset. I could hear her heavy breathing and sniffling. I felt so bad for her, but perhaps she could be my chance to figure out what happened to Lily. Where is Lily? She hasn't spoken to me since last night. I thought she was just playing a joke on me, but now I don't know. I looked at Josh with a confused stare as he began to pace around a bit. I put the phone on the loudspeaker and asked her, Why do you think Lily's playing a joke on you? Did she say anything odd? Yes, her girlfriend replied. She sent me a message around 1.30 a.m. I looked at Josh baffled before I asked again, What did the message say? Help me. I looked at Josh with wide and worried eyes. Lily would never pull a prank like that on anyone, let alone on her own girlfriend. She always told us how worried she'd be about her girlfriend getting paranoid. So we knew she wouldn't send a message like that, unless she had a reason. I continued to speak with her girlfriend, but I was getting nowhere, so I reassured her that we know where Lily was, and that we'd be calling her back tonight. Her girlfriend seemed suspicious, but just agreed and put down the phone. Myself and Josh paced back and forth. We had no idea what this could mean. Why would Lily send a message like that? We continued to think for a while, and decided until we knew where Lily was, we are going to skip our lectures. We spent a long time thinking over things, and began to write down our connections that we made. Afterwards, Josh read the list out to me, so we could think them over. Alright, so first, Lily goes into Daniel's room around 10pm. She is locked in his room. Then we return home at 2 a.m. During that time, at around 1.30 a.m., we find that Lily texts her girlfriend, saying, Help me. You discover that neither Lily nor Daniel are home yet. Daniel's door is unlocked, and his laptop is still left on. You find the image, and then you leave. You return to your home, and heard Daniel had come home, but not Lily. Lily is still not back home, but Daniel is. What the hell could this all mean? I thought over it for a while and then came to a conclusion. I didn't want to make that connection, but it's the only connection I could salvage. Daniel did something to Lily, and we have to confront Daniel tonight. If Lily doesn't come home between now and tonight, we have to. Josh looked shocked, but he agreed. Daniel would be our only chance of finding out what happened to Lily. After that night, there were still no signs of Lily. We knew that her girlfriend would be calling soon, so we decided to turn the phone off. We didn't want to reassure her with false information. We waited until around 6 p.m. before Daniel finally came home. He looked rather startled to see us both standing there in the living room, and he lightly placed his art folder and satchel against the sofa. We both stood up. Josh spoke to him, and I could tell he was trying to keep his composure. Daniel, we'd like to have a talk. It's about Lily. Daniel's eyes seemed to widen ever so slightly, but nothing I thought was worth thinking over. He tilted his head at us, looking confused, and asked us, Why is something wrong? I shaken my head. I didn't want him to think we were accusing him of anything. We would never get any answers out of him if we straight up accused him like that. Daniel seemed to look a little on edge, looking away from us as he itched his wrists under his baggy gray jumper. He pushed his rather dark black bangs off his face as he spoke. Then what's wrong is... Is she okay? I mean, I know she left her phone here last night, so I suppose there wouldn't be any way of getting a hold of her. We didn't say anything. We weren't too sure on what to say to him. How are we supposed to ask him if he did anything to Lily without him taking offense? But then I realized something. It taken me a moment to realize it before I spoke. You just said she left her phone here last night, right? How the hell did you know that? I could see Josh's eyes light up. He realized the same thing I did. How on earth did Daniel know she had left her phone behind unless they went somewhere? 
You already acknowledged the fact that Lily never leaves her phone anywhere. So how on earth did he know that she'd left it behind? Daniel didn't answer us. He was silent for a while before he pushed past us and walked into his room, slamming the door shut. We walked over to his door, banging on it harshly before he shouted, Leave me alone! I have coursework to do. I'm sure Lily will show up tonight. Just stop being so paranoid. <sighs> we just didn't know what to do. Daniel clearly knew way more than we let on. But there's no way we were going to get that out of him. We walked back into the living room and slumped back down. I ran a hand through my hair. <sighs> what is going on? I then realized that Daniel had left his bags on the sofa. He must have been too frustrated to pick them up when he stormed into his room. I peered around at Daniel's door, hearing no sound of him leaving his room yet. I knew soon enough he'd be coming out to get his bags. In a moment of madness, I picked up the satchel and emptied the contents onto the coffee table. I could see Josh's eyes widen before he whispered to me frantically, What are you doing? What if he sees you? I didn't care. I needed to know anything I could about Lily. She was a roommate, but also a best friend. I couldn't just leave this to solve itself. I pushed through documents and came across what looked like a ticket. I crumpled it up and pushed it into my pocket. And then I found a zip-up document bag. I pushed it into Josh's hands and told him to go hide it. He complied and went to hide it in his room. I then quickly put all the other stuff back into Daniel's bag and rested it up like it was before. Then I got up and walked into Josh's room. I watched Daniel go back to the living room to pick up his bags. Before he walked back in his room again, Josh grabbed the zip-up file from under his pillow as we both sat down on his bed. He didn't say anything. We just read the front cover of the file. T. It sent chills up my spine. I knew whatever was inside would have a connection to the image we found on the computer, but we saw nothing we expected. It was a series of photographs. The first photo was a picture of what looked like an abandoned room of sorts. The walls were covered in old floral wallpaper. The floor was just damp wood. It looked like it hadn't been used in years. Then the next photos were just pictures of tools and plastic tools. We then noticed that the tools were linked to dentistry. You know, like needles and drills. It was pretty creepy. But it was the next photos that made us both drain of color. It was photos of Lily smiling. We flipped through every single of Lily, and each one, she had a big toothy smile. Such a sweet smile. One of her most distinct features was her large front tooth. Just her left one. We always found it cute, but it was no laughing matter. We noticed on the back of the photographs were labels, and each tooth and each photo was marked. There were notes on the photos that said things like, remove or replace. It knocked Josh sick, and I was more terrified than ever. We knew that we couldn't confront Daniel about these photos, that would get us nowhere. We just sat in silence for a long time, staring at the photos in disbelief. I then remembered the ticket I had found stuffed in my pocket. I reached into my pocket with a shaky hand and pulled it out, bringing it to my vision at read, Group Ticket 2, Location Station Road, Time Date, 2008-09-2011, 11.34pm. We both looked at each other. This was yesterday evening. We knew exactly what we had to do now. We had to find where Lily was. We never saw Daniel for the rest of the evening, and Josh had become incredibly paranoid. He asked if he could sleep in my room tonight. Now, although that was a bit awkward, I really didn't mind. I mean, he was scarred real bad, so I didn't want to leave him alone like that. When Josh was sleeping, I printed off a disturbing image for referencing when I spent most of my night planning the next day. I had already emailed our professors letting them know that we weren't going to show up because we felt sick, and I checked how far away the station road was. To my surprise, it was only an hour's drive away. So I figured we could take Josh's car up to the station road and figure out the location of where Daniel and Lily had been. The whole time, I kept staring at the teeth.jpg image. The horrible thought crept into my mind. I didn't want to think about it, but it could have been a possibility. What if the person in the picture 
It's Lily. Every time I thought about it, I'd shake it off, telling myself I was just paranoid, but it would all add up. The timing, the photographs, it would all make sense. I didn't want to believe it. I certainly wasn't going to, until we found Lily. The next morning, myself and Josh got up around 6am. We wanted to be at our dorm before Daniel woke up. We made sure to lock our own doors, so we decided to take Lily's phone with us. We didn't want to leave anything behind that would indicate that we were suspicious. We left the dorm and got into Josh's car. I had brought a long, small bag full of different things, such as the photographs, the flashlight, the camera, and a notepad with a pen. We loaded ourselves into the car and made our way towards Station Road. We were able to pinpoint it with a GPS. When we got there, we found that we were in a rather abandoned looking area of town. This place was practically deserted. All we could see was tall crumbling buildings and little empty houses. We'd taken out the photo of the room and began to walk up each little house. We pressed our faces to the glass to see if we could make out the floral wallpaper like in the photograph. We spent a good few hours just doing this alone and we found nothing. We were getting pretty angry at this point. We just wanted to get Lily back. Josh got so angry that he walked up to one of the house walls kicking it harshly as he shouted at the top of his lungs. Daniel, you sick bastard. Just as he kicked the wall one last time, we noticed that it began to tear like paper. Josh looked down at his foot and realized that he tore what looked like a piece of the painted wallpaper from the stone wall. He had began to rip away the remaining pieces of paper, only to reveal what looked like an outdoor basement. The doors were rustic and scratched, and we noticed a metallic handle was clean, as if it had been tampered with. Josh looked over his shoulder to me, and I gave him a nod. I quickly took a photo of the layout of the basement. Josh then walked down to the doors and gave them a push. And to both of our surprise, the doors were simply blocked by plank wood, which Josh was able to push away with ease. We then pushed and opened the doors slowly and cautiously. If only we knew what was coming. Perhaps it would have saved us both from throwing up. As we stepped inside, we were met with the rancid odor. Neither of us knew what the smell was, but we knew it both made us feel instantly sick. Josh gagged and coughed, covering his face with his shirt. I swallowed back vomit as I continued to walk. I pulled out my flashlight and shined it inside the pitch black stone room. I continued to walk, and we heard nothing. As we walked further into the room, the smell only thickened. It was getting so bad that Josh threw up behind me. He quickly composed himself and stumbled back upright before we continued. As I looked around the room, my eyes met with something on the floor that made my heart race and the flashlight dropped from my grasp. It was Lily's knitted sweater. It was the sweater she always wore when she went out for pizza or went to go bowling. It was the same gray sweater with the same little torn threads on her sleeves. I could see Josh from the corner of my eye. His eyes were as wide as mine, as all the last color drained from his face. I picked up the sweater slowly, holding it in front of me when I noticed there was a large thick blood stain soaking all the way through the jumper. It started thick from the collar and became thinner as it went down the sweater. I was now the one to throw up. I collapsed on my knees, puking heavily. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what to think. I soon maintained myself and stood up again, holding up the flashlight. As I put up the sweater in my bag, through blurred teary eyes I pressed on. I found nothing from where I was standing, and I heard a small light switch flicker from behind me, as red light filled the corner of the room. And then I heard him. Josh screamed louder than ever, louder than anything I'd heard before. My stomach was in knots as I shined the light to wherever he was standing. I was standing over a large black table. I watched him stand there in complete terror, as if he was frozen. I can only imagine what he was looking at, and I truly wish I left it to my imagination. I walked over to the side, and I laid my eyes on the sight before me. It was Lily. She was strapped down on the table, wearing nothing but her jeans. Her body was covered in thick layers of tape, keeping her strapped down. 
One of her arms dangled to one of her sides, but the other arm was nowhere to be seen. In replacement was just a taped up stub with stains of blood under it. I could hardly breathe. My stomach was now knotted and my breathing was so tight, all I could do was stare. I looked up at Lily's face. Her head had been forced back. And we could see that her innocent blue eyes had been violently gouged out, and in replacement was a thick black wax that filled up the empty eye sockets. Her nose had been contorted and broken, snapped in many places, but the worst part of all was her mouth. Her jaw had been forced open. We could see her mouth had also been filled with the same black wax. Her teeth had been ripped out and misplaced in all different directions. I noticed how her mouth had been stretched upright, her cheek tearing to reveal more teeth. It gave her a contorted, horrible smile. Her face was covered in streams of her own dried blood. I stared at the hand that was holding the mouth open. It was her own. Her own hand had been stitched to rip her cheek. The flesh was torn, falling apart under her nails. Her nails were cracked and chipped. They were cracked and chipped with staples and little threads holding the hand in place. The red fluorescent light created a horrific shadows and highlighted every grotesque feature that was now on Lily's face. I silently and numbly, I silently and numbly pulled out the picture of teeth.jpg and stared at it. And back to the real thing. They were identical. Josh brought a shaky hand over Lily's cheek before he collapsed on the side of the table. I could hear him sobbing horrendously by her side before he passed out beside me. I too felt like I was on the brink of collapsing, but something caught my attention. You see, I could feel the presence of someone else coming into the room, but I already knew who it was, and I knew there was nothing we could do about it. I heard the door slam shut, and the plank of wood being placed over the door. I heard the sound of footsteps. I heard them inch closer and closer, until I could feel their presence behind me. I knew he was there, and I knew there was no way out. I heard their voice speak faintly behind me. I'm so sorry you had to find out this way, but it's okay. It's all for the sake of art. But that wasn't what made me collapse. I knew well enough from here on out that my fate was sealed, but after he finished speaking, I heard one more tiny sound that made both my heart ache and my tears stream further down my cheeks. Before my vision faded away from me and my hands slipped away from the table, I could hear Lily choking. 